Um, we also have, uh, and I decided to plug this in, we just, we've been using the residency at Stunt to actually more fully develop this. So one of the things we were testing just yesterday is an EBO the EBO mechanism, which is just a, um, a E-core, a ferrite E-core wound with 28 gauge wire and a pre-biasing neodymium magnet that uh, so pre-biases the string magnetically, and then you basically push and pull against that with the electromagnet. And if I hook that up, just leave this guy on. Yeah. Oh, you have to probably turn. You want to drive it at, at you want to drive it at the uh, a frequency that matches the you know or, matches or the any higher harmonic at all. Right? Well, no. If you if you do the higher harmonics, actually, if you do that, I can access. Uh, and this is this is something that, that Gottfried has done. And he has a, a cello that's just strings with no no other pitch changing control. They just open strings, uh, eleven of them, and each one you just access individual. So if you just did a harmonic above, you get that harmonic most prominently. That's pretty easy. Those are used for the piezo or other material fixing these vibrations. We could. That's another option: is not to have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you just get an octave. You know. Right and actually, this one is good. You can hear the string a little bit more. If you just want to go up to three. Tuning to get away from that synthetic. You could use two coils, <laughs> one tensile to the other, but one, only one of them is looking at the string. That might, right? <laughs> that's a yeah. yeah. There might be something like that. That's we. I don't, either way, it has to be figured. You know, another option is just. I think if we put shielding around the pickup and had it focus yeah. more on the string, that that might might oh, help yeah, a lot. Would be a slightly. <laughs> we strive for the simple, and often it, 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 yeah, that's right. It's a balance. Right. So I, th I mean, I think actually that's that's. I'll leave off there, and maybe maybe hopefully there are questions that uh, to be asked about whatever aspect of, of this. Yeah. Um, just one quick thing. Uh, there's going to be a concert tomorrow night at OT 301 with uh, the Ear Duo and Friends and Robots. So, so come so out to that. Improvising with with. Uh, a number of, of human performers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also just the tension on the swing. What's that? The tension on the swing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, adjust it. We decided not to. Actually, the moving bridge was a, a decision because there there are examples of. Um, oh, there's a group that made a robotic sitar and they hooked up a gear motor to the tuning mechanism and and worked that way. There's a servo electric. Um, monochord that someone built that has basically, uh, the, it's a similar to the mechanism on a pedal steel guitar where you have a rocking bridge, but it's tensioning. It's rather than changing the length of the string, it's changing the tension and the length, I guess, a little bit. But the problem with, with those is, is a lot, um, you know, we don't have any, we have a very simple feedback loop between a linear potentiometer and the position of the bridge here. And that directly, um, we don't need to worry about um, about number one, actuators that have enough power at the speeds we want to retension the string. And also accuracy is definitely a problem with some of those methods because that tension changes over time as the string has been on for longer. Whereas the length, whereas the length, string length, we can actually um, implement lookup tables at each, every fret level for um, basically having, we can definitely have like scent Sent precise tuning with this with this mechanism. Yeah, they, they don't think your bridge will actually reflect all power, which is actually string. Right? It will actually still start vibrating. Mm -hmm. Oh, it does actually. Turn turn it up. I can't move this because now I have a 
temporary pickup place in it, but you can. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get you your chase Yeah, but we're not picking up the bottom because we have okay. our pickup above the bridge, and that's that's actually one of the reasons we're not up. So the piezo solution doesn't work so well because then you end up picking up both sides, and then you get a die home essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So there are lots of yeah, it's all those kinds of little um, to find the right solution. We'll have to navigate those constraints. Um, and one of the other things I think you briefly mentioned, but this instrument. Um, there's a whole sort of going to be onboard effects that are oh, right, yeah. digitally controlled. Um. Yeah, we're, we're basically yeah mining the analog basis. So each string, there, so first it will be two, then four. Each string has its own octave fuzz unit to begin with. A mixing circuit and octave fuzz. So yeah. all the whatever feedback we want of the, between the instruments or whatever the analog effects are, which are. Now fuzz, tone, and then octave down, two octaves down, and four octaves down are all computer controlled too. And, and feedback through that. And feedback so, yeah. through that and between the two instruments. And so. that I think really ties into the idea that we were talking about before about these being kind of a modular approach. Um, we sort of see these as new versions of modular synthesis. I mean, they're sort of new the ideas and the concept, concept is similar to that of a modular synthesizer where you have different components that you can control and plug into each other um, and that you know ranges from elements like the circuit, the effect circuits, to actually plugging the instruments themselves into each other. Tone generation that can. Yeah. In the back, it's yeah. you know like a patch bit, but it's quarter quarter inch cables that go between uh, quarter inch jacks. For the instrument. And also sort of mimicking vir virtual. These are real virtual instruments in a way, yeah. computer controlled. Um, so you can you can plug them into GarageBand. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> the next edition of GarageBand will include. Well, and, and that was a paradigm shift for us. They're, these are all MIDI controlled. Previously, we were, we were serial controlled. Using kind of a yeah. you know, specialized so serial design. Yeah. 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 Uh, does it uh, sound different than uh, actually Mika with the wooden body? Because it's actually completely steel playing. Oh, sure. sure yeah. You, can, yeah. you can hear it. Uh, it's uh, and, and Pam is, is out of that, too. I mean, it's yeah. the resonant properties of the frame itself and of the, well, Pam had a, you know, as a wooden neck. So those are all parts of, that's what it sounds like, yeah. And we should say we're not trying to emulate the sound of a guitar. No. Well, that's uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was never the plan. It, yeah. it wouldn't look like this if right. they were. So. Right. May I, may, may I suggest uh, a, a sitar like a buzzing bridge that you can keep control and. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, 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 right. That you can yeah. control. Because that works by having a. Uh, it's just a bridge that isn't a cone like this, but it is a, a curve. So the string uh, is shorter when it bends down and longer. And, and that's yeah. what's creating the buzz. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting, yeah. yeah. So I suppose yeah. that you could make something that. Uh, um, this is a string that uh, can be uh, tuned into. That can be tuned like, uh, right. And then just, yeah. you know, making it ride on the moving bridge. And yeah. <laughs> no, See, that, this, that, this is the yeah. problem we have. We, we, you know, we brainstorm, there's a million love, things we do, and then you like, oh, we have to I build all I want to explore that this. idea, but then I think of what that means. Um, yeah, you know, this is where everything is going faster and faster. So if you delay it, oh, yeah. I, hope I wish everything was going faster. Yeah, it doesn't it seem like Whenever we <laughs> estimate an hour for something, it's not that it's two hours, it's you know, 10 hours or 20 hours. Yeah. I guess if we were traveling close to the speed of light and everyone else, I don't know, maybe work faster or something. So when you guys um, use this with other performers, yep. um, what, like, what works in terms of the presence of these guys? Because somehow in the video it works, but mm -hmm. then of course when they're all alone, and right. there's no humans, although there is a very strong, I mean, I'm sure it's a computer system. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, one of the things is it's a, it's one answer is that it's not a solved problem. There are a lot of people working with these kinds of devices. You know, are are navigating that in various ways. We're not completely 
satisfied with the stage presence that these scenes had there. In fact, the original design, I can't forget, yeah, on the function diagram very clearly was onboard video cameras with a video mixer so that we could actually amplify visually, because these are very small movements. And so we're interested in maintaining the visual connection, you know, the visible physical gesture connection to the audible sound that you develop. And you, you know, if you're standing even sitting back there, you don't really see these elements move so well. You see the moving bridge once, once, once it starts moving. But, um, and so it's not a solved problem, but I believe that one of the ways is we're not, uh, we don't really have anything against amplification visually or audio wise. And so that, uh, you know, the presence of the sound of the instruments and the fact that they're physically there, even if you can't see everything that's going on, it seems to have, have a weight. It's also a function of the, the, the performance venue size. So, for example, we just did a show in, um, in Boston, which was small, it was intimate, and Pam was on a table, and you could feel Pam, you know, as it was moving and playing around, because it gets pretty, uh, when it gets all excited, um, you know, she moves and resonates everything around, around her. So, you get a sense of those things there, you know, in larger venues, that's, you know, that's just sort of the problem that we have to deal with through, through making things larger than they are. And one of the new things on these instruments that maybe was working, we're, we're still getting working, is uh, LED strips that will be programmable in a variety of ways. So, there's sort of like a light behind each uh, moving element, and it's not that we want a one-to-one -one relationship where the motor moves and the light happens, but something like that we think is sort of a bridge to maybe starting to figure out some of those issues. And, and the other thing is that you know, again, if we're we're not trying to we're not trying to make anthropomorphic instruments. We're not trying to just mimic human behavior. So we don't want to just mimic what human motions are. I mean, I think we it's it's a design uh, challenge to think about what is interesting from a mechanical movement perspective, and that's something. When you're trying to make something that's small and portable, is you know you have to make concessions. Um, so. Yeah, I mean one of the so we might not do things we probably wouldn't do it all with one to one and Mickey Mouse it, but having our we have, we have these LED light strips that are also working out the implementation. But you know showing the air column length with that is a very simple way that, that suddenly if you're at the back of the hall you, you see that and you see you hear a direct relationship. And so they're simple. Simple things, um, little little tricks that we're, we're planning on, on using to, to, to really solidify that relationship that, uh, that we want to convey. But I think it's a much wider issue, I mean, even outside of electromechanical instruments, yeah. just sort of capturing that gesture. And I think in yeah. electronic music, people have been trying to do it for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's definitely something that we're very interested in exploring further. I mean, the other uh, implement, uh, one other way to implement is to make completely different instruments. I don't know if you know if anybody knows Siguru Goto, uh, he's in, in Paris, and he makes you know wonderfully the beautiful percussion instruments that are uh, made these robotic arms, and they have the multiple degrees of freedom, and they can really you know they can stand alone on stage and, and just whack a drum, and you get that full. It is more, much more anthropomorphic, but it's also a clear gesture. But then, you know, talking to him about how long it took to just program the movement of that arm and how the comparative amount of time of making sound with it is, you know, the, it's another way to approach the problem that creates other problems. <laughs> how do you um, envision the playability of this thing as you, you plug in a MIDI keyboard, which goes through some control software, and then you can just well, yeah, we've, we've never done yeah. that. We, that's, we've that's yet to do that, but you could do though. that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, you know, I'm not like a keyboardist, so that wouldn't be my, my first choice. But definitely, for you know, some sure, you could use it as just a very direct, um, you know, in that sense, it would be you know, it's much like different a than playing an organ or a synth. Or, synth you know, module. You know, it's just a displacement of the gesture, of the yeah. Rhythm, yeah. Typically, we, well, I guess all of us, right, are typically in program like Max MSP or something where we can arrange a piece and you know the pieces have ranged from totally pre-written compositions where just notes are specified to algorithmic compositions to interactions with live performers or other sound sources. Um, tomorrow night if you come to the concert you'll see um, a lot of that a lot of that type of processing going on. For me I'm you know I'm just not interested in like I'm frustrated by my ability to do trills on a keyboard. It's not very interesting to me. And so 
So I don't want to map that onto the, I'm not really that much interested in mapping that on. I'm much more interested in, in, in finding ways of accessing the unique capabilities of these that do things that I could never you know, do if, if it was that kind of a direct mapping. And then you sort of program algorithmically and the program actually listens to what the other tools are doing. Yeah, and that's... Uh, yeah, that's an evolving thing, but yeah, the, the, the kinds of relationships are listening, doing a, doing a simple, um, per, you know, like a perceptive model uh, of, of, of listening, where it's, where it's taking in various parameters and it's frequency based, it's, it's tracking, it's doing beat tracking, doing all those kinds of things, and then using like a uh, Markov probability matrix to, to improvise along, like a second order Markov chain that improvises patterns based on what's been played before. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah. uh, I mean, that's really, you know, I think it again, it illustrates another one of our challenges with our particular configuration is that, okay, like we spent all this time building the instruments, but we're not, that's not the end of the line for us. That's no, like the beginning of the line. Set, and then yeah. we switch to sort of composing and thinking about all these various types of things. Um, you know, so it's definitely, I mean, it's a challenge, but it's something that, that's why we're building the instruments ourselves, because we want to have what we want. Yeah, um, as, and, as composers, it, there are advantages and disadvantages yeah. <laughs> um, to, to doing this ourselves. But, but we're definitely, it's an integrated process mm -hmm. where the, yeah. the compositional goals will feed back into the instruments. So once That's you right. start using these, they'll change dramatically, I'm sure, of, of what they have on board. And I've got a quick question about the, the drum circle, what you did with me. Yep. Yeah. That was the next idea about, was interacting with the nature and it was reacting to Yes. Uh, but it was also the sequencing of, the, of that uh, part. Was it actually derived from actually a crystal clock with a very solid timing? Or sure. Yeah, yeah. so, so, or so basically, well, it, it depended on what section. Yeah. 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 Crystal clock, maybe even it's uh, just make it very, just a very solid timing. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah I don't know. Um, well, what's that? Because if you listen to rock music, well, I mean, the timing is much more, uh, well, loose because of the drummer probably, well, the drummer's lost it, but it's, he also interacts with many other players on the stage. So. Yeah. That's something I really miss in most uh, well, uh, piece benefits of the which is the most specific sequence to that I noticed. But you do, that actually is interesting also the, 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 the pace with the, uh, with the environment around you, or is, um, is it part of the, the, the composition algorithms that you uh, designed for this uh, drum circle? Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. The, it, 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 so listening, there's, and it goes through stages, so it'll listen for a certain amount of time. Um, and then it reinterprets, and sometimes it's it's basically quantized, so it's reinterpreting things in a more sort of straight grid-like rhythmic way. And some other times, and algorithmically, that changes and becomes more and less free um, as sort of the piece develops. And so yeah, basically, you have this sort of semi-random process of these. This arm shakes this basket that drops rocks through, and as the rocks drop, um, that of the data rocks is. I mean, so it's not like a, it's not a computer algorithm. It's sort of a, it's a real world thing where there's randomness. Yeah, randomness yeah. via the stones fitting through this. Small and so, like area. initially, that start that creates a rhythm, if you will, um, and then we sort of have set up a quantization that occurs over time that maybe is part of the discourse of yeah. nature and machine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah, we would love to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.